Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 66 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case highlighting management of intracoronary thrombus. The patient had stable angina and was referred for diagnostic angiography. Diagnostic angiography did show a filling defect in the proximal left anterior descending artery. To further evaluate this, we performed optical coherence tomography and uh, we found that there was actually a thrombus inside the proximal LAD. So that filling defect actually represented intraluminal thrombus as seen in this fuse, which is fairly unusual, of course, in a patient with stable angina. And the next question is what to do about it. This patient did have intracoronary thrombus confirmed by OCT. He did have good undergrade flow. The thrombus appeared to be on the large size and the patient did not have ongoing uh, ischemia. Therefore, one option would be to just give uh, heparin and then bring him back in 48 hours. Uh, however, we decided to proceed with PCI and then do something to protect for potential embolization. And those things can be either thrombectomy using various catheters or a filter or laser. In this particular case, we decided to place a filter distal in the vessel, which is off-label. So this is the filter. It's a filter wire placed in the mid-LAD and then we place the uh, balloons and stents in the proximal LAD and actually after stent placement there was TIM0 flow distally and there was a filling defect inside the filter. The filter was retrieved and then TIM3 flow was restored suggesting that the thrombus was successfully caught into the filter. Everything was going okay, however, uh, in a, within a few minutes and just before finishing the procedure, we noticed that there was another lesion developing inside the stent, which was hard to explain given the good early result. So we repeated OCT, and uh, this was uh, fairly enlightening, because essentially what it demonstrated is uh, acute stent thrombosis in the making. This is the recently implanted stent, and there is a enlarging amount of thrombus pedunculated protruding into the lumen that is started to form inside the recently placed stent. So acute stent thrombosis in the making. We did give uh, intravenous glycoprotein to beta inhibitor. We did multiple balloon inflations that improved the stenosis. And then we did another OCT run. And this demonstrated that actually the thrombus had uh, significantly improved with mild amount of residual thrombus inside the stent. So a nice result was achieved uh, and the thrombus seemed to regress. However, it was a good thing that we caught this early, otherwise the patient might have had complete vessel occlusion due to stent thrombosis. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, large thrombi can cause distal embolization and filters might be useful in preventing this embolization. The OCT is useful for assessing First of all, what is the filling defect? It showed that it was thrombus in the first place, but also they're very useful for assessing stent failure. In this particular case, acute stent failure, the OCT demonstrated that it was due to ongoing stent thrombosis. And finally, for acute stent thrombosis, the treatment is aggressive and dipletal therapy, as well as optimization of, uh, of the stent expansion. Of note, the ACT was in a therapeutic rate more than 300 in this patient. Sometimes stent thrombosis can happen because of suboptimal anticoagulation, but this was not the case in our patient. Thank you.